All right. I will call this meeting to order. We will start with the consent agenda, all the following items which concern reports and items of a routine nature normally approved at AHA meetings will be approved by one vote unless any trustee desires to have a separate vote on any or all of these items. The consent agenda consists of the discussion, consideration, and action on the following items. Minutes of the Finance Committee meeting on July 14, 2014. Minutes of the Monthly Trustee meeting on July 15, 2014. Minutes of the Special Trustee meeting on July 18, 2014. And a check report July 8, 2014 through August 7, 2014. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. I second. We have a motion by Scott Brown, second by Darlene Sanderson to approve the consent agenda as it was presented. Roll call vote, please. Brown? Yes. Klein? Yes. Sir? <coughs> yes. Kinsey? Yes. Knox? Yes. Sanderson? Yes. Son? Yes. Next is the CEO's report. Candace? Okay, the skilled um, care continues to grow. We had seven skilled patients this past month. Uh, Lindsay's patient load is increasing as well, and Gwyneth Holderby uh, started with us on July 30th and has been in the office uh, full-time, and her visits are picking up as well. Sleep studies began last, I think it was Thursday. Uh, we did one sleep study, and that will we'll continue to um, schedule those. Um, in the following months, um, I think it'll be on Thursday, she said, and we will uh, start off with two and work up from there um, as long as we have those referrals. During the month of July, the volunteers have logged um, nearly 500 hours of volunteer work. And Dr. Ken Brown and Lynn Heasley have been working with the uh, BJCC inmates on the yard crew with funds from the Cal Patty Bingo. Um, they have um, bought additional trees and bushes and planted those. Um, so the grounds are looking really good and we appreciate Janet for um, coordinating all of that. All of the plantings around both um, facilities have, have been because Janet has spearheaded that. So I appreciate her work towards that. Again, the Cal Patty Bingo, um, with that money, they are going to use that to build a pergola at the convalescent home. Uh, Longtime volunteer, Lynn Heasley is taking a sabbatical for a few months and we do miss him. Uh, he does plan to volunteer again and we wish him well and hope that he can return soon. Um, attached, you'll find uh, several of our HEN projects that have been reported on eliminating harm across the board. Um, our teams to continue to report on several quality issues. Uh, these reports, we, we will not get credit for doing a good job until we have 12 months of data reported. So we are happy to report that we have saved the hospital $105,600 by participating in the program this year. We've had new lights installed in OR1 and the surgery crew is very appreciative of that. Uh, we had our strategic planning meeting um, on July 31st. Kyle Mondorf and Ashley Olivo from SSM led, led us through that process. Uh, attached at the back of my report you'll find that the results of that planning session. Uh, we have our first meeting um, on Thursday with uh, some of the providers to discuss same-day appointments and convenience issues. So we're looking forward to getting started on that. Patient portal is steadily growing uh, with the number of people who are accessing it. Uh, we're getting ready uh, with some marketing efforts and uh, getting ready for the fair. And thank you, Hala, for helping out with that, helping with the AHS basket. And Gary Brown uh, from Sight and Sound is providing the Wi-Fi free of charge so that we can hopefully get some people signed up um, for the patient portal. Share Hospice uh, had their licensure, uh, the resurvey done, and uh, all deficiencies were found to be corrected, so their federal, federal licensure was renewed. Uh, our managers continue working on the state survey um, issues and uh, we will be resurveyed sometime in the near future. 
Amber Jewell, one of our uh, four nurses, RNs, um, is our new infection control nurse, and we appreciate Amber's willingness to step up and take on uh, this new role. Darlene Bainbridge was here recently for a few days. Uh, if you remember, she's with SQSS, the, the new quality um, software system that we put into place. She, she's really an incredible lady. She has really helped us um, begin to wrap our arms around quality and uh, get a grip on everything that we're supposed to be doing. Um, it probably will take us about a year to fully get that software system up and going, but um, I, I feel like we've got a good start on it. Chad Campbell with the Alba EMS provided um, education regarding patient transfers uh, to the nurses in the July meeting. And I've interviewed a couple of physical therapists to fill the open position and I'm happy to say that we have hired Haley Nida. Um, she will join us soon and um, we, are, we continue to look for another one as well. Um, Amanda, as you know, submitted her resignation and her last day, I believe, is September 2nd. So um, we are looking forward to, to getting those services um, in line and, and making sure that, they, that we don't have any um, gap in services. So we'll continue to provide that. I think that's all I have. Does anybody have any questions for me? There's no no questions for Candace. I would entertain a motion. I move that we approve the Chair Medical Center written report to include hospital, hospice, and convalescent home, quality measures, age caps, score measures for August 19th, 2014. Second. We have a motion by Dr. Kinsey, a second by Terry Klein to approve. The Share Medical Center written report to include hospital, hospice, and convalescent home quality measures, HCAP score measures for August 19, 2014. Roll call vote, please. Brown? Yes. Klein? Yes. Gasper? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Knox? Yes. Sanderson? Yes. Son? Yes. All right. Candace, thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Appreciate it. Next, the CFO's report. Okay. <clears throat> the month of, of July, we posted $1,521,293. That was an increase of $91,971 compared to prior month. Uh, the gross revenue uh, for the different facilities were as follows. The hospital seen a decrease of $56,647. The nursing home increased by $141,328. And the reason it seems such a large increase from the prior month, if you remember the month before, I had to make an adjustment for the revenue of almost $100,000. But it did see an increase, but not as much as that says there. And the homestead increased by $7,089. Uh, patient days for July were up. They were up to 109 compared to 70 in June. Hospice days were also up uh, to 162 compared to 142 in June. And even clinic visits, uh, 787 compared to 697 in June. Nursing home had an average daily census of 52.2 compared to 51.8 uh, the month before. Hospital contractuals, uh, less bad deaths and charity, uh, was remained pretty steady at 42.2% of gross patient revenue. We wrote $101,304 off to a collection agency for collections. We gave away $935 in charity care. Uh, we did see a, some increase in our operating expense of $392,056 which was uh, actually an increase of 104364 The actual expense was 392056 but that was due, 66000 was due to that shop payment that we have to make once a quarter for Medicaid. So uh, otherwise, the expenses were pretty much the same. Salaries did see an increase of 32327 but we did have one more day uh, during the month of July than we did in June, so there's one more uh, actual day of payment as well as with the little bit of increase in census and activity, we did see a little bit more uh, salaries uh, there. Net operating loss for July was 109538 but with sales tax and some other contributions, we actually made net income for July of $17,082. Cash continued uh, to be pretty much steady. Between the two months, we had $338,607. 
this represents 11.3 days of operating expense. And accounts receivable continue to decrease, uh, decrease $205,469, and we ended up at $2,971,899. Gross days were 72.7 in July compared to 76.1 in June, which is positive, and net days was down to 50.1 in July. So that was positive. Uh, the next page, page two, is kind of the six month uh, snapshot for you guys to look at for all facilities. I did change your financial packet, so I'm going to kind of go through these with you a little bit more in detail of what I've done here. This is all three uh, campuses the hospital, the nursing home, and the homestead. So that gives you the uh, balance sheet or the income statement for the last six months there. Um, like I said, really the only big item there you can see is the other operating expenses, and that's related to that $66,000 uh, to the shop payment. Uh, page three shows you where all that other expenses is. I broke that down month by month to show you exactly where all that expense was going to be located at. Page four uh, kind of shows you the two years side by side uh, for the month as well as year to date for all three facilities. <coughs> You can see that we're about $170,000 uh, more gross revenue this year than we were last year at the same time. Um, about about $15,000 more net income at the same time as we were last year. Page five is just the hospital by itself, its income statement for the last six months. And then page six shows you the income statement of the two years side to side. And then page seven is your nursing home for the last six months. And page eight will show you the two years side to side there for you. And of course, page nine will be the homestead, six months, and then the two years side to side. So what I did is I gave you a combined statement and then each individual entity's income statement so you guys can review that. Page 11 is the accounts receivable uh, for the last six months. That shows you uh, what we have outstanding. Really, the only thing there I want to mention is that our unbilled was up quite a bit from the prior month. It's up to 497,940, and that we hopefully we'll get that back down. We had lots of patients in the hospital. We switched uh, people that were doing our coding and stuff. Uh, we actually had a coder that was out for a week that does all of our outpatient coding. So hopefully in August that will come back down and then we'll get that cash collection. So that's really the only item on that page that <clears throat> is really probably the most important item there is that unbilled portion. We're down to 3421172 at all facilities. Page 12 just shows you a percentage of accounts receivable uh, by financial class as well as aged out for you about where we stand. And the one positive thing that's happening is that over 150 days is going down, and that's what we need to have happen. We're either collecting it or getting some collection agencies to get our money collected. We're, we're really starting to, I think, see a really good movement in corrections in our billing processes and stuff. Page 13 and 14 is just the balance sheet for you to review. Okay, the last five pages I sent to you is the same statistical information that you got on a monthly basis, but it's in a graph form. And let me kind of go over a couple of these graphs with you, and then if you have any questions, we can talk about it. <clears throat> the, like the very first one on the very first page at the top, it says patient days. Uh, the dark or the black graph is for fiscal year 2013. The white bar graph is for fiscal year 2014, and the gray graph is for fiscal year uh, 15. So in May of 2013, we had 38 patient days in the hospital. May of 2014, we had 78 days. You can see June had 23 and 60. In July, and now I've got three years worth of data, I've got uh, all those, June we had, uh, July we had 31 days in 13, 53 days in 14, and we had 109 days in 15. So that kind of gives you an idea of what that is. Next to it is uh, the last two years uh, total numbers, and the projected number is what, based upon what happened last month. So what I did was, for this month, it was 109 <laughs> times 12. So I don't really expect to have, it would be wonderful to get to 1,308 patients. I'm not really expecting that, but as the year moves on, that trend, probably about six months into it, you'll have a pretty good idea of where the year is going to be. But 
it gives you a good idea of are we, are we moving the right direction, are we moving the wrong direction, and gives you an idea of, of each individual indicator that we have in the facility of where we're at compared to uh, we were at the same time that month. Because during different times of seasons and stuff cause different times of volume. And so if you just use a flat budget or whatever to look at, you don't know. You might be right at your average in, in January during flu season. Well, that's not necessarily good because you should be probably spiking then if that's to get your averages back down. So anyway, I've given you those graphs for you to review. If you guys have any questions about that, I'm, I'm willing to talk about that as well. So um, Anyway, I just thought that might be a little bit easier to look at that way. The last page on there on the graphs, I did give you something, days in uh, AR and days in accounts payable, some financial indicators too, just for you guys to review. To show you some of the things, I might add some more graphs later on. If you guys have anything you'd like to see graphed out and monitored for for the board, I don't mind doing that either. If you just tell me what you want, we can graph it for you and put it as board packets. So you are doing a great job. So well, I just want to make sure. Yeah. So, but anyway, I just want to give you that for your information and stuff. Um, <clears throat> Like on your clinic visits, I have one that's got all the clinics together, and then I broke out each of the clinics by provider and stuff, so you can see that too. So when you when I says total clinic visits, you're going to get Colvert, uh, Kinsey, Head, Holderby, and then also the after hours in Northwestern's clinic visits all combined together. And I got them broken out separately also for you. So if you add all those numbers up, if I did everything right, which I hope I did, it'll come out to your total that shit. So. Sure. Wound care plan. Is that just it's, it's in Kenzie. It's, it's in just yours. Yeah, in it's in lumped here. Yeah. And if you want me to, I can break that out. I think we should break it out. Okay, I will do that. All right, I'll just do that. That's really different. We get paid for it differently. Sure. And so I can easily do that. That's not a problem at all. Questions I can answer over the financials or the graphs or anything or anything you want to see different. Great job, I like that. Thanks. Well, yeah, it's really yeah. good. Yeah, I like it. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> you have anything else for us? I don't. I do not. That was all good information. Okay. I just wanted yeah. to keep going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for Kevin? If not, Kevin, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate all you're doing. That's really nice, Kevin. Well, thank you. Thank you. Very good. All right. Next is the Medical Staff Executive Committee, Chief of Staff, Dr. Kinsey. All right. So the Medical Staff Executive Committee met this month, and we have two people to recommend for appointments. Uh, I move that we appoint to Allied Health Staff, Gwyneth Holderby. Nurse practitioner. Second. We have a motion by Dr. Kinsey, a second by Steve Knox to appoint to Allied Health Staff Gwyneth Holderby, CNP, FNP nurse practitioner. Roll call vote, please. Brown? Yes. Klein? Yes. Gasper? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Knox? Yes. Knox? Yes. Sanderson? Yes. Knox? Yes. The medical staff also recommended. Uh, the appointment to courtesy staff of James Colbert III, MD, Urology, and I move that we reappoint him to courtesy staff. Second. Okay, who had that? Steve. We have a motion by Dr. Kinsey, a second by Steve Knox, to reappoint to courtesy staff James Colbert III, MD, Urology. Roll call vote, please. Brown? Yes. Klein? Yes. Gasper? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Knox? Yes. Sanderson? Yes. Simon? Yes. All right. Then um, I want to just kind of summarize the quality assurance performance improvement initiatives that we have. There are several pages in here that talk specifically about individual items, but uh, essentially the quality assurance committee, quality assurance performance improvement is um, a requirement to maintain our licensure as a hospital. 
and there are a lot of real specific things that they look for in terms of continuous quality improvement. And so before the our most recent survey, um, we recognized that we were running a little behind in that area and started catching up with a lot of things, including um, mostly getting policies down in writing. Um, I don't really think that I can think of anything we were doing particularly wrong. It was just that most of it was not down in writing. It was passed on by word of mouth from person to person, and it was required that it be written down. Um, and then you know what you're doing, so when you go to improve it, <laughs> you can actually make changes. And then since the survey, there were a, a few things that they did want us to, to tweak, uh, policies that they wanted rewritten in a way that was more intuitive, uh, that follow the law more closely or the other regulations and that sort of thing. So there's been a lot of change going on in uh, quality assurance and performance improvement. And one of those things is a program that starts with an S and is a four-letter word, um, but um, I don't know all the letters. Um, QSS. SQSS. SQSS. That's it. That's <laughs> I thought maybe you were calling it something. I was just going to kind of hold out there for a minute. <laughs> uh, I thought there was a chance. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yes, SQSS, which is a computerized program that's designed to help us pull all of this together and to um, really assign responsibility for a task to a person and then if it needs to be moved to another person to have a trail so that you know, you know, this is the big task and then this person's responsible for this little part, this person's responsible. These um, policies that need to be reviewed by this room <laughs> every year that they get renewed, that they get reviewed and renewed on time. There's a whole lot, lot of stuff involved in that. And so we've been really... Um, not me so much, but a lot of people in the community. L literally thousands of actions. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy the amount of stuff that needs to be done. And we couldn't possibly discuss it all here today, but I think it gives you an idea of the, the global effect of it. Um, essentially, what they, they say for quality assurance and performance improvement is that, you know, if I walk up to Terry Klein, who happens to be on the Alva Hospital Authority, and I say, who's responsible for performance improvement, you say... Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Specifically, I am. <laughs> You're in the Air Force, you know. Um, so, you know, there's not a person in the organization that is not responsible for trying to help make it a better organization. And that, um, it's a far-reaching plan to get everyone to really understand that, to, to have the person who's cooking in the kitchen or cleaning or who's here on the hospital authority and only is in the hospital once a month to recognize that if you see something that seems like it could be improved, that you are responsible for helping us make it better. Um, so it's, it's a big undertaking, but I think we've got a good start on it. Um, and so, let's see, that leads me into the medical staff committee reports. Um, starting with... Oh, here we are. Yeah. So the long-term care is the first uh, committee report. This is Dr. Barrett's in charge of this. Um, they meet quarterly to um, talk about what, Jane, all sorts of things that need to be improved um, and the pol which policies need to be overseen, um, infection control, safety committee, pharmacy report. There are... Um, one of the big things in the nursing home is reduction of medications. And when the survey for the nursing home came through the last time, that was a big issue, was why is this patient still on this medication? Can you reduce it? Um, unfortunately, sometimes when you reduce medications, you have problems too. And so um, the goal is to try to find a balance so that the patient's on the medicines they need, not on the medicines they don't need, and don't cause everybody unneeded stress and um, problems but the uh, so that's long-term care the um, safety committee met um, safety committee 
really talked about making sure that everyone is educated year round. We have a system that we do a little bit of annual safety training in a, on a computer related basis, but there are other safety things like fire drills and uh, MDMS, the uh, material safety data sheets, and all that sort of stuff that people should be familiar with uh, and familiarized with throughout the year. So um, the homestead, the nursing home, the hospital kind of keep that kind of training up. Um, uh, part of the life safety drills, the generator tests, fire alarms, that sort of thing, all has to be done according to schedule. Um, Dr. Kinsey? Yes. What's uh, Facility Dude? What is that? So um, Facility Dude has been the way up to this point that we notify the maintenance people that there's a problem and they need to fix it. And um, then they get that work order through Facility Dude and they prioritize it and go from there. We're hoping that the SQSS, SQSS <laughs> we need help, um, that the SQSS system will help us and almost eliminate the need for facility dude because it's part of quality assurance and quality improvement. If we see a, a danger, then we put it in SQSS and it goes to facility dude, and then we have tracking on it all the way along. If um, maintenance finds that it's not really something that they can fix, um, then they pass it on to the next person. If it's something perhaps that Candace has to actually hire outside help for, um, it would it would be in that system. We'd be able to track it, who had it, how long it sat, and where it went after that. So um, it's it might be really a, a cool way to to help consolidate things. Um, and then they're going to break up the safety committee because the nursing home kind of has separate rules from everybody else, and uh, it's probably best that they work on their stuff by themselves as part of an overall safety committee. So there's two, there'll be two in the future. Um, it's always fun to read our infection reports because nobody gets hospitalized, hospital-acquired infections here, but that's probably a little too positive to think of. Um, I used to work in the ammunition business, and as we talked about ammunition safety, people would say, well, when was the last time we had an explosion here? The answer is, it's not the last explosion we're worried about. <laughs> <laughs> it's the next one. And the, the same thing um, with infection control. You know, we have been, uh, because we're a small hospital and our cleaning staff must do an awesome job, you know, we don't have hospital-acquired infections here. Um, but we can get them, and so it's really important for us to pay close attention. And when we do have a patient who comes in with an infection that potentially could spread, that we keep it controlled, and we've done a great job of that. Um, okay, so then the next thing is uh, new policies and procedures. The, um, each of the policies that we review needs to be approved by the hospital authority. The ones that we're doing today are really very simple. Um, and so I'll give you a briefing on what each one of them is, and we'll go from there. So uh, D, the, uh, the Share Convalescent Home, Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation Policy and Procedure. This policy came about, or the, the requirement for this policy came about, as some nursing homes uh, chose not to have anyone on their staff, or not to have people on their staff at all times, who were capable of providing pulmonary resuscitation. And so they called themselves a nursing home, and they told people, but we don't do CPR. So if you need CPR, you're out of luck. Um, the state said, uh, that's not acceptable. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a nursing home, if someone is staying at your place, um, you have to provide cardiopulmonary resuscitation uh, if they choose to have it. So this policy essentially says, we will have trained staff available to provide cardiopulmonary resuscitation to anyone who wants it. And I move that we approve this policy, uh, the share convalescent home cardiopulmonary resuscitation policy and procedure. Second. Good the second. Me. Caleb. I forget you. She was quiet. That's what it was. <laughs> and a motion uh, by Dr. Kinsey, a second by Hala Simon, to approve the share convalescent home cardiopulmonary resuscitation policy and procedure. Roll call vote, please. Run. 
Yes. Klein? Yes. Casper? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Knox? Yes. Sanderson? Yes. Simon? Yes. So next on the agenda is approval of the Sheriff Convalescent Home Notification of Facility Closure Policy and Procedure. Um, this is again a requirement. Essentially it says that if we should ever choose to close the nursing home that we have to follow um, certain specific procedures. We can't just walk in one day and say, hey, uh, you're out of here. Uh, we have to notify the state. Um, I don't want to flip it over and read it to you. Um, uh, yeah, we have to notify the state at least 60 days ahead of time, and we have to relocate all of the people in the nursing home. We cannot close down if they don't have a place to go. Um, and essentially, this policy says we're going to follow the state law in regards to closing our nursing home, and I move that we approve it. Second. 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 All right, we have a motion by Dr. Kinsey, a second by Hala Simon to approve the Sheriff Convalescent Home Notification of Facility Closure Policy and Procedure. Roll call vote. Brown? Yes. Klein? Yes. Casper? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Knox? Yes. Sanderson? Yes. Simon? Yes. Oh, I'm next. Nice. One more. Yep, it's still you. <laughs> My gosh, I have a big part today. All right. So next on the agenda is the approval of the Share Convalescent Home Civil Rights Alternative Lifestyles Policy and Procedure. It's a very brief policy, again, in line with the state requirements, saying that we do not discriminate against people for... Choosing an alternative lifestyle. Choosing, there lifestyle. you go. Choosing an alternative lifestyle, along with all the other things that we don't discriminate with them. So, um, even if, though we wouldn't even know about it, I mean, right. you're admitting how would you know? Right, except that, in, like in a nursing home environment, two people of the same sex might choose to live together, and then you might know. But we don't care. But we don't care. Yeah, that's the policy. <laughs> but we have to put that in. And so we right. have a policy that says well, we don't care. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, and I move that we uh, approve that policy. Second. Um, we have about Houston. The pain management protocol is not on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Have to save that one for the next time. Save that for next time. Oh, you didn't want to. She just wanted her to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Oh. There you go. Let's finish. Okay. Okay. We got a motion mm -hmm. by Dr. Kinsey, a second by Steve Knox, to approve the Sheriff Tom Wilson Home Civil Rights. Alternative Lifestyles Policy and Procedure. Roll call vote, please. Brown? Yes. Klein? Yes. Casper? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. Knox? Yes. Sanderson? Yes. Simon? Yes. All right, and finally, um, the last page is not something we need to approve or disprove, just to let you know what's going on. Um, Mid-level providers are not allowed to prescribe uh, certain narcotics. Um, but in the emergency room situation, they might need to uh, under the supervision of a provider. This document uh, is kind of a protocol that allows the nurse practitioners and physician's assistants to give these pain medications under the authority of the physician in an emergency situation. So, and all the physicians agreed to it. Correct? And all the physicians agreed to it, signed by all of us in another copy. This is just in the ER or for prescriptions? Just for the emergency room. They are not allowed to write prescriptions for those. Okay. okay. Any questions for Dr. Kinsey? I would like to say thank you for making med staff reports. Positive and energetic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That was the longest one I think we've ever had. <laughs> no. But they're very informative. Yes, it is. Positive. absolutely. Yes. Stuff we need to be aware of. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Kinsey. Appreciate all you're doing. Next, do we have anything for an EHR report? 
Um, I just w I, I will tell you that I was in contact with Gordon uh, with the Excite Network and, or company, and the entire team is planning on being on site in the next few weeks. Um, things are going well, but since we're getting into you know that meaningful use period, uh, they felt it would be useful to all be together to be on site, and so we'll be seeing them in the near future. Other than that, I did what in on the CCO meeting today. Mm -hmm. nothing. No, just nothing more than what we'd already knew. Okay. They were just moving forward. So um, today they had a phone call with um, what's we call it CCO. I don't yeah. Bridget. What's the name of the uh, coordinated care of Oklahoma? Coordinated care of Oklahoma. That's the um, in the past you had heard that we were going to have some sort of exchange where all the health information and. Um, could be pulled from. This is what Coordinated Care of Oklahoma is, so we're in the baby steps of moving towards um, getting to that point to be able to communicate that data. So we're in the very beginning stages of, of doing that. Okay. All right, next, the Sheriff Convalescent Home Report. One Miss Jane Gaskell. Are you going to come back for future meetings? Or? No. <laughs> you didn't have to be so abrupt I'm about better. it. Well, I just want that clear. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to introduce Rita Goodrich. Now she will be taking my place. She has a smile. She has a fine job. She has the shoes on my board to fill. Anyway, I have, I've been coming since the late 80s, so I, I appreciate all the hard work that all of you folks do. I know it's a lot of time, dedicated time, and you're well paid for it, I know. <laughs> it is appreciated, and no one really knows how much hard work that you do put in. And Lady Shares appreciates all of your hard work. It's up to you to keep us going and running, and we do appreciate it. Because without you taking care of us, we wouldn't have jobs. And it's important to our community to carry on, to care for those that we serve. So I do appreciate it. And on to the report. But just a minute. Okay. 12 meetings times 34 years <laughs> is like 408 meetings. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> that's a year's worth, man. I mean, that's like a meeting every day for over yeah. a year. Oh, that's crazy. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm pleased to report that three oh, nurses went to CPR class today, so we're just refreshing. So you can't help somebody because you know we do have skilled residents that come, and other people or staff or families that come in that would really like to be saved in case of emergency. You know. So we'll be prepared. Uh, somebody did mention how many swing beds you had. We did have five skill in the month of July, so that was great. Uh, two or three of them have got to go home that month also, so that's pretty exciting when you can do something rewarding and somebody is able to heal and go home. Um, Dr. Kinsey did the committees. I think uh, the one final thing that I was pleased with is that the survey team did come back and clear us, and it was a good survey year, so that was great. I can, I can go out happy. You can rest <laughs> assured <laughs> now. Rest that assured. was the one thing she wanted to go out on a good survey. And that's tough these days. And Rita will do a fine job. You have a great team in place, and they'll keep working hard and do well for you. Thank you. Well, Jane, we want to say thank you to you. Uh, that place couldn't have kept running for all those years without you. Your, your dedication, your heart and soul of that place, and the time, and all your hard work is very much appreciated. And uh, Rita, you do have hard, big shoes to fill. <laughs> but uh, we also welcome you uh, to that position, not necessarily to uh, to share a convalescent home, but uh, and I'm sure you will do a good job. You had a good teacher. <laughs> She'll earn her own way, her own way. Uh -huh. Well, we wish you the very best and hope that you enjoy retirement. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's cracked that better in the golden years. <laughs> if you get bored, we do have a volunteer That's program. Right. Yeah. yeah. I know that would be awesome, wouldn't it? It would. Huh? It would be great to have you back. Well, if I come back to Oklahoma, I'll she, be glad that that'll be with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's moving to uh, McKinney, Texas. So wow. Wow. With children and family, which I bypassed all these years, so yeah. I'm going to get to really learn what that's like. Make up for lost time. Yes. Uh, yes. How excited! That's great. Well, good luck to you and safe travels. All right. All right. Next, Kelly Homestead report. Um, I'm busy at Homestead. Um, we had. A couple of deposits put down on apartments. We had one person move in yesterday. We have another person slated to move in by the end of the month or right at the first of the month. And um, we, our occupancy is, is uh, in the month of July was 78.5%. Um, and it's uh, it took a dip in June and it's building back up from there. We have 24. Um, open inquiries, uh, people looking for apartments that haven't said yes or no, that are still yet to make a decision. And uh, we only have 11 apartments available as of today. So that's, uh, you know, promising. I, I think we're well on our way to uh, filling the, the whole complex up. A couple of the apartments are going to need some uh, pretty major work to get them ready to rent. Um, but uh, we're getting prepared for that. So. Um, we do have um, some new things going on at the homestead. Um, the meal tonight was prepared by Carson's Food Service Management, who has, uh, they started August 3rd with, uh, uh, I guess, operating the kitchen at the homestead. The ultimate plan is to have them operate all of our food services uh, uh, here on Share Drive. And, and um, food tonight, I, I Hope everybody thought it was good. Um, Great. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the owner of the company was texting me, wanting to know how. It was going to <laughs> Very good. I haven't had any complaints. So um, that's uh, it's been a complete change in how we do food services at the homestead, and it, it uh, um, has gone from a, a cattle call type show up at three different times a day and, and you know feed your face to. Uh, open from 7.30 in the morning to 5.30 in the evening and, and um, breakfast all day long. We've got, some, I think the menu is available for you there at the table. Um, but uh, that is, uh, it's a pretty good menu. There's over 20 items on the menu. Um, there's all, also specialty items, chef specials each day of the week. Um, in the first week, just to kind of give you a help, drastically things change in terms of, of uh, the number of meals. We had, uh, I think it was either Tuesday or probably Wednesday or Thursday on the first week. The Thursday. Thursday. Uh, we served uh, 64 uh, lunchtime meals. It may have been about 75 to 80 minutes. Um, and um, 33 of those were uh, employees that had come over either from the nursing home or the hospital to take part in, in the, the employee meal. And that uh, 33 was five more meals than we prepared for employees in the whole month of July. So um, it's been a huge um, uh, increase in volume. The staff have responded pretty well. We have increased staff. Um, we have some uh, wrinkles to iron out, but uh, all in all, uh, it's going pretty well. We're promoting the new service as a homestead service. Obviously, our employees can take part in it, but um, it's not something we're open to the public, but we are open to residents, their families, and invited guests. So um, I did invite some people last night. I hope nobody minds that I invited the city council if they want to come out and eat. Um, I did speak to the city council last night, gave them the, the quarterly update that they've asked us to provide to them, and, and uh, um, I think that went well, no questions were asked, and they didn't run me out of the room. So. I recommend the catfish. 
Chicken fried steaks on there every day. They're using products from VAP. They're using products from Advanced Foods. They're, they're using other Oklahoma products as well. Um, it's, uh, I think it's, you know, they're an Oklahoma-based company out of Tallala. Um, we encourage them the next time they print the menu when they run out of those to yeah. identify that. You know, it would be neat to know mm -hmm. for the customers to know that they're using VAP dough or whatever it is. So. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for Kelly? Yeah. Good work. Yeah, that looks good. <laughs> you guys are invited to come eat with us too. All right, I was wondering what you meant. Scott, if you go, he's on the council. But. <laughs> 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 God will take us as gifts. We, yeah. Our volunteers, which you guys are all volunteers, are of course always welcome to join us for any meal any time of day. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Kelly. Now, Kelly, again, SMC Foundation Report. I have no report. Okay. Very good. That was quick. <laughs> Bridget, St. Anthony's Report. Thank you. Kelly. Appreciate it. Um, well, just a few things, um, just to update you on where we're at with St. Mary's, and um, the final contract came through legal, um, so we're excited about that. So we've had we have set up our meetings, and we're going to meet monthly, and um, with both hospitals to start discussing how we want to build our affiliation. And um, I think I shared with you last time that we have several service lines that we're going to joint venture with them um, as well, but. One of our main initiatives, of course, um, in rural development is to see how we can develop our affiliate network in Northwest Oklahoma. So as we're having these meetings, that certainly is going to be one of our discussion items. So if there's opportunities that you like to have in your community, um, you know, certainly bring those up. I'll be visiting with Candace on a regular basis to see how we can grow from the Enid area as well and develop that relationship. So we're excited about getting that started. And um, we also broke ground on the pavilion. Um, I didn't understand that. I guess that's kind of been in the works for the past 10 years. I think that's why it's been a big deal for Kyle. So, you know, 10 years later, I think they finally have got it moving. It's going to go. Um, the great thing about it is that it's going to offer up 48 more ICU beds for St. Anthony's. And I don't know if many of y'all are aware, but ICU beds are slim um, in Oklahoma City. Sometimes it's very hard. Um, to get an ICU bed. So we're really excited about that. And um, of course, completion is not going to be until early 2016. It's slated for May 2016 right now. But I think we all realize that it happens very quickly, but that will allow us to, the capacity with the ICU beds and what we have currently inside the hospital will have the most ICU beds in Oklahoma City. Um, but it really, and um, shifting patients around and in all the tertiary facilities right now is quite the issue. So we're excited about that opportunity. And um, I think most of y'all know that we have quite the um, psych population as well um, in the inner Oklahoma City area. And um, if you were to present to our emergency room currently, you walk in, there's a small holding area over to this side. And, and so right, right now, at any given time, that's piled up with people trying to find placement for them since there's very few beds that are open in Oklahoma now that they're kind of closing down and the funding's going down. So it's becoming quite an issue. So one of the things that they've incorporated into the pavilion is a nice segregated area for those folks so that they can have their privacy as well unless it's not interruptive to the business and the emergency room that's going on. So lots of great things from that. And surgery will move over there. They'll have um, a step-down unit for those patients that are coming out of ICU to step down into the unit. And then when they're ready to go up to the floor, they can go over the floor. So it's going to be a very nice pavilion. And then they're cramming it in that space where the parking lot is right now. But it's going to be an amazing structure. They're building it over some of the architectural and landmarks that are there in Oklahoma City. So it's interesting how they've kind It'll of It'll go over it that in. corner store. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's what it that shows. That Kaiser's yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be real interesting to watch it go up, but it's all kind of brought it all in together. So it's if y'all haven't been up to the campus at some time, next time you're in the city, you need to drive by either. And it's amazing the things that are going on in downtown Oklahoma City. And just right behind our parking garage, there's a whole new 
apartment building and things are going. It's just really amazing the things that they've come together and done in the community, so it's great. Um, just a few operational items, and just so that you're aware, um, we have developed a peer review um, process. I don't know who that y'all are currently signed up with, but as we develop these things, we push them out to all the affiliates, so um, you can take advantage of that. Um, Dr. Rader through the Mark V group was willing to do that for us, and we were very happy. Um, it's kind of been a hard situation for affiliate hospitals to find somebody that's willing to do peer review, because it's hard when you're a small medical staff and you're having to peer review each other's charts. It's not always the most pleasant situation, so it gives you that extra opportunity to use completely as needed. Um, you can send a chart up to him, he'll review it, his, or one of his staff members will review it and send it back to you. And um, also kind of meets that regulatory requirement as well. The next thing that we'll start working on in peer review is for the specialty services. Um, that takes a little bit more talent um, because we've got all of these segregated specialty groups within the hospital that have to agree <laughs> to do all the peer review. So we're going to start working in each of those areas and try to pull those together so that the affiliates will also have the peer review process. They didn't hit real hard on that during survey this year, but it's always kind of, they'll always kind of breeze over it. Um, but as soon as they're past all of these things, we feel strongly that probably that will be the next thing. Um, if you have visiting surgeons or visiting EMTs, how do, how do your medical staff know that they're competent to be doing procedures in your facility? And that's a service that we're trying to put together so that we can do a peer review on that as well as satisfy. And um, we've also worked through the survey process um, to provide a radiology medical directorship. Um, so that's available to your hospital. Um, I know currently y'all have a, um, a previous relationship in place, but if ever that changed or you had a need, um, we have that established as well. Um, our group that does all the reading for St. Anthony's is going to do that for us as well. Um, that was at several of the critical access hospitals um, got hit with that on survey. There again, they're saying, who has the ability to say that your technicians that are doing your services and are capable of doing that. So they want to be sure that you have a radiologist that's marking off on that, marking off on your machinery. And so we did put that together. That was one of the survey items. And we're also working on 24-7 um, mental health um, assessments through telemedicine. Um, because of the growing need in the uh, mental health behavioral psychiatry area, um, a lot of those resources are you can get to them, or sometimes it may take you a couple of hours to get somebody to come. Um, the ER staff seems to be spending a lot of time on the phone, three, four hours at a time, trying to find placement for these patients. Um, so we're currently providing that service for um, Shawnee and for our health plexes. So um, when several of the affiliates reach out to us, we say, well, we're doing it for them. Let's try to let's try to do it for the affiliate network as well. So we're working on that program now. So hopefully we'll have that offering. And within the next month or so and to be able to do that on an as-needed basis. And the only caveat to that um, is that we can't guarantee a bed out of it. We can give you the assessment so that you can find a placement for the patient. And if we have a bed, great, send them on. But if we, if we don't, then certainly it's the hospital's responsibility to be sure that they find a bed. But we'll give them that assessment, which is the first step that you need to be able to find placement. So we've had lots of, lots of different things going on this month. So just to clarify, currently the situation we're in, our mid-levels in the emergency room, they cannot certify a patient to be placed. That's what the mental health evaluation is for. Um, it is beyond their scope of practice to do that. So that's why they're trying to do that. You know, you know yeah. they actually, that recently changed just this year. It prevented them from doing that, so. Mm -hmm. And every region is different, you know, and and there's pods where there's really, really good mental health services. Some people have done grants and they have those things available. And then you have sections where there's absolutely nothing. And one of our hospitals got, you know, had a patient and literally had them there for almost 25 days because they couldn't do And it's so dangerous when they're there because you do not have the skilled people to be mm -hmm. taking care of them. And, and they and couldn't transfer them out anymore. Couldn't find a bed. Oh, wow. It just if you can assess that patient right up front and know exactly what's going on with them, you can get them in the right spot. They were being, you know, wanted to take care of the patient, so they admitted them as an inpatient, and then 
they just almost could not get them placed anywhere. We've run into that a couple times, haven't we, Dr. Kinsey? Absolutely. Yeah. So we're hoping by adding that frontline assessment that we don't, it, it prevents us from making maybe some of those mistakes, and that's not the best thing for the patient either. Um, so we're certainly going to work hard to get that pulled together in the next 30 days. Um, sleep studies started, so I think that's going to be a good program. Um, hopefully that will build, and then we can build on top of that for sleep studies. Um, she was talking about the SQSS, the Quality Assurance Program, and that is a very excellent program. So I'm glad to hear that y'all are going to participate in that. Darlene Brainbridge does a really nice job. Um, I worked with her a lot at Holdenville. Before she had her electronic product, I worked with her manual product. And, and I've seen the product at Holdenville, and they're using it, and it's, it's really, it'll really help streamline your processes. So it's, that's great, great choice. Um, and on the CCO, I don't know how much y'all know about the health information exchange, but um, just in case you read anything about it, um, I think, you know, it started many years ago when the electronic health records came up, and um, some people went out for grants, and other people developed their own things, and so in Oklahoma, we have these little sections. So the Tulsa market is using a product called My Health. And then Norman um, was using that product as well. Or, no, they were using um, SmartNet. SmartNet. And SmartNet also developed up in the Tahlequah area as well. Um, Norman has just recently going to go with the CCO. So the Oklahoma City area is going to use the coordinated care. Tulsa is using My Health, And then you have some pods that are still using SmartNet. So it's, we, you hope you make the right choice of, of choosing a network. Um, Blue Cross and Blue Shield has recently come out and said, well, we're going to use My Health. So right now there's conversation about that. So if you happen to read that and you say, well, why are we doing CCO if Blue Cross is doing My Health? It, that's the reason. You've got pods going on. So it makes sense right now for us to be in with Oklahoma City here because that's where our referrals are going. And the folks that are in the Tulsa area, they've stuck with their My Health because that's where they're going. So I think there'll be some real interesting conversations um, in the months to come with Blue Cross and Blue Shield and um, choosing a, a whole section of the state that they're kind of carving out. So now whether that will result in us having to put an extra health information exchange on top of that, it, that may happen as well. I don't know. But just in case you read anything, that's kind of the the philosophy behind it right now. So, but I think um, that will hook us all together and as we're trading information, so I think that'll be a great, once we get that up and going, the doctors will be able to see some additional information about the tertiary facilities. Um, and then lastly, I guess, the strategic planning. So, did y'all feel like the retreat went well? It, it looked like you got lots of good points that came out of it. And so I guess um, really next steps, Candace. So I guess from a board perspective, if there's, we can take it all the way through if you want us to. We can stop here and y'all can develop your plan. It's we do it different ways and with all the hospitals. So it kind of is up to you where you want us to take it from here. If y'all are going to develop it as a board or if you want us to kind of put a plan together and then y'all add to it or. I think we need to go through and prioritize them before we do either way. Sure. Okay. Because I don't think we came out of that meeting with priority mm -hmm. list. No, and that's, you know, we've with some of the other hospitals, they've asked us to put the whole thing kind of mm -hmm. together, and then you assign the people and the time frame mm -hmm. and add any additional information to it, or we've left it right where this is at, Which and we've taken it all the way. So it's just... I think that it requires some work of us first. Okay. We're willing to do as little or as much as you want us to, I guess sure. is what I'm saying. So just if, if you want to do, if you want us to work through the template with you, we we'll have to, if not, then. Okay. And certainly along the way, if you need additional information from Ashley, from business development, and market data, anything that you feel like may have been missing from that meeting or anything, just let us know and we'll be happy to, to subsidize. Okay. So, it looks like y'all came up with some great things. I'm, said that I missed it. Well, it went pretty well. There's a pretty decent turnout, too. <coughs> I mean, I thought that was good. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you.
Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Bridget. You Appreciate it. yours and uh, St. Anthony's uh, support. Excited about uh, St. Mary's. We are too. We're excited to start our meetings. The first one is Friday. So. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that'll be good for us as well. So that's great. Next, Scott, do you have any type of report from City Council? From the Council that I'm aware of. All right. Um, I just, I basically have a couple of notes. One, I again, I think that it was very neat to see this new uh, setup with the new uh, food service. I thought that was neat. I also want to commend each and every one of you. Also, look very sharp tonight, <laughs> and uh, we may just, you know, had to set a uh, status of how you had to show up to a meeting. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> good luck. Scott's all these breath yeah, down there. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, we probably won't continue on that track but uh, <laughs> hey this was a very good meeting I, I thought everything we had a lot of good reports I thought it was a lot of good interaction and and uh, it was a very good meeting everything but it being Jane's last one not to take any way about it being Rita's first oh, one but no, she needs all but uh, <laughs> again we do wish you well and we'll be saddened to see you later. all right with all that there is no new business we are adjourned